they've done all the work. When you're hiring CEOs, how much equity do you give them and how much, uh, how much do you pay them and how do you incentivize them to want to stay with you for a long time? Yeah, so totally depends upon the situation. Um, you know, obviously if a business is much more established um, or demands somebody who's like much more like, um, like mature, um, that, that makes a situation where oftentimes you have to come up with more. Um, my best situations are when I can partner with somebody. So all this stuff I'm in, while I have significant stakes in it, I have other people on the cap tables. Like that's one of my, like I feel like superpowers, like I can just like maintain partnerships. Like I have a hundred percent success rate on partnerships with people. So the absolute best way is if I can get somebody like Paul at Dura is to be like a co-founder. And the absolute best way of that is if they're a co-founder and they put money in it like me, and then they make that their job. Like that's the absolute best skin in the game kind of outcome. But you know, you can have anywhere from a 27 year old who will make 60 to 80 K a year plus benefits um, to some of these people who are much more senior, like our coffee, um, our coffee person, you know, he worked at 25 years at Circle K and he's running this, he's running that business. Um, he obviously needs to make much more money than that. Um, and then the equity really depends, totally depends on the opportunity. It depends on how much skin in the game they want to have, uh, what level of commitment they have and how early they're coming in the venture. But it could be anywhere from 40% to 20% to 5%. And why does, let's say for Dura, uh, why does your partner want to give you what, it, let's call it, let's pretend you have 30%. I don't know what you have. Maybe it's 50, maybe it's a little less. Let's just say 30%. Why does he want to have, give you 30% and he's a day-to-day -day in it, but you're not? Right. Uh, so how do you think about that yeah. like value exchange um, when you're not going to be the operating person and then they are? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, so you're asking that question from the same lens I have, which is like being an operator isn't our dream. Most people, their, their dream is to be an operator. They're excited when we're able to work together and create an opportunity for them to be their best self. Right. And that's what I see kind of as that benefit. And so and, and so I think a situation like that where like, you know, oftentimes I'm part of the very early figuring out what the idea is going to be. Um, I'm putting up a substantial amount of money. I put up more money than, than say the other partners did. Um, we did some debt to do the first deal. Like I personally guaranteed it. Uh, and then the last thing is like, like great teams, they have these complimentary things. Like how much money would you use to fund a new business? So that one was like a couple million. And then some of these are like 50 to a hundred. Wow. Okay. So that's about you do put up a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, skin in the game matters. Um, then that also helps me not to try to do too many things. Like I could just be like, okay, like I'm putting real money in this. I better really believe in it. Um, but like, like the last thing with these operators is a lot of the things I feel like I bring to the business where it's like strategy insights, like best practices and connections. Like those are things that they're happy to have somebody along on the journey with them who has the same level of commitment, um, and wants to be a board member. Like I, I don't want their job. And I, I'm not, I wouldn't be good at it. So, you know, I think that's, that's the partnership I end up having with these folks. Sean, have you heard of um, this guy named Kevin Ryan? Only through you. He's like a media, right? Is that, is that the same guy? Yeah. So, Michael, have you heard of this guy? Kevin Ryan. I'm Googling him. All right. So I think there might, there's probably a billion Kevin Ryan. So like maybe a baseball, <laughs> that's a baseball player. Oh, he's name, the Alley Corp like guy. Might come up. So, yeah. So listen to this guy. So early in his career, he worked like in the newspaper business, nothing particularly exciting. And then he worked at this company called DoubleClick. And he was like the 30th employee there and then took over as CEO. And then DoubleClick was sold for like a billion or many billion. And it eventually became AdSense for Google. So like pretty big thing. He told me that he had made like um, very low digit eight, eight figures. Uh, he was like, it was enough money that like I'm set, but uh, like I still wanted to like create stuff. And so him and this guy named Dwight, who I think he worked with at DoubleClick, they started Alley Corp. And their whole thing was, we're going to fund companies with two hundred dollars to $300,000. And all of the ideas are going to come from us. All of the ideas are only going to be back of the envelope math. And we're going to hire someone to get it off the ground. And we're going to give it 300000 and six months to prove if this is a good idea or a bad idea. And we're going to do it a bunch of times. A few of their successes that they've done this with are... Uh, Mongo MongoDB, which I don't know what it's at now, but in the range of like a 20 to $50 billion uh, market cap publicly traded software business. The second one is Business Insider, which sold for $600 million, I think, but it's like a big company now. The third one is Gilt, Gilt Group, which was a clothing company that was huge. It, it didn't actually work out, but it was huge for a little while. 
And I think the fourth one, there's another, oh, the fourth one is Zola. You guys know Zola? It's like where you go for wedding registries. I believe that's a unicorn. And there at, might actually be two or three more of these companies that Alicorp has like uh, founded. And basically he was like, yeah, so me and Dwight just sit around and we come up with like a cool idea. Like I go to a wedding and I just ask people where they bought all the gifts. And like, he's like, I just had this idea. So I knew someone who worked at Guild Group who mentioned she liked this type of business. I hollered at her. I go, hey, here's 300K if you can get this going. And you get a small portion, but we get most of it. You want to try it? And that's how it worked. It, it's a, he, he's pretty amazing. Speechless. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> it's like, yeah.